Today, I will be answering some questions that I received in an email from a new pastor's wife. The young lady reached out to me and shared that she's having some challenges in her marriage. So first, I'm going to share some of the challenges that she's having. Her husband was previously married and isn't fully healed from that relationship. He doesn't believe he needs counseling, but she wants to do her part as a godly wife. Her husband is battling spiritual issues and is intimidated by her anointing. She's called to deliverance ministry and has been delivered from lesbianism herself, but her husband's Denomination doesn't operate in deliverance or the prophetic. She also feels that her husband has some pride and narcissistic traits, and there's tension around how to navigate her calling while submitting to his leadership. The church her husband pastors is dry with a lot of religiosity, and she's unsure of what to do next. There is a lot going on in your life right now, but before I give you some advice, I just want to acknowledge your honesty and your willingness to try to receive some help. Before I dive into my tips, first I want to share a little about myself. I create content for pastors' wives like you to help you flourish in your calling and in your personal life. I tackle real issues and give practical tips. And most importantly, I encourage wives in ministry to lean on God for guidance. One of the things that you mentioned in your email that you want to develop a gentle spirit in the right heart posture, which is very important to have. And I'm glad that you recognize that you need those characteristics. If you want to develop a gentle spirit and the right heart posture, one scripture to focus on is 1 Peter 3 and 4, which talks about the beauty of a gentle and a quiet spirit, which is precious in God's sight. Developing a gentle and a quiet spirit starts with a few key areas. Surrender to God's control. Allow him to be the head of your life. Allow God to lead you. Tell God, yes, let your will be done in my life. Surrendering to God a lot of times is not going to feel comfortable for you. And you're probably not going to want to do it. But in the long run, it will bring you peace and draw you closer to God. Surrendering to God also means to allow him to guide you, especially in difficult situations. If you listen to the Holy Spirit, it will teach you how to be quiet and listen instead of responding when you are upset. And the Holy Spirit will also help you to trust in God. And once you start trusting in God, that is when peace and gentleness will come into your life. Because you will learn not to worry about what's going on in your marriage. You can have peace and trust and know that God is going to bring you through. Tip number two, develop humility and patience. In Philippians 2 and 3, it talks about humility and to put the needs of others above our own. And sometimes that means bearing with your husband's imperfections. Have patience with your husband, which means showing him grace while allowing God to work on his heart. Most importantly, you have to work on yourself and make sure that you have the right demeanor. Don't focus so much on your husband, but focus on yourself. In your email, you mentioned that There's tension around how to navigate your calling while submitting to his leadership. When I was having problems in my marriage, I felt that my husband was at fault. Even though I felt that he was at fault, God started dealing with me and he told me to submit to my husband. And when God told me that, I was upset because I felt that 
God, you're not being fair. How can you tell me to submit to my husband? And he is the one in the wrong. But God told me still to submit to my husband. Once I submitted to my husband, God transformed my marriage. And he also transformed me. The issues that I was having in my marriage, I noticed that the more I tried to please my husband and the more that I submitted and respected my husband, the more gentle he became with me. God has an order and you have to follow God's order. In your email, you did say that you listen to the Holy Spirit. God has given you a gift of deliverance and how that your husband won't allow you to use your gift. In the Bible, it talks about how that that your gift will make room for you. And it also talks about there is a time and a season for everything. Whatever your gifts are, the reason why your husband may not allow you to use them in the church, because it just may not be the season right now. You mentioned that you guys only been married for one year and a half and that you have a young baby and also a stepchild. So one thing that I would tell any new wife is when you first become a first lady, don't focus so much on being active at your church. Focus more on managing your home, taking care of your children. Focus more on pleasing your husband, being the wife that he needs you to be. My mom was a pastor. As a child, I watched her getting stressed out about always having to counsel the members or straighten out issues in the church. So one thing that I have learned as being married to a pastor is that when a pastor comes home, he needs to come home to a place to where he can rest, relax, feel rejuvenated. But if you guys are not getting along, And if you are complaining about not being able to use your spiritual gifts at the church, fussing or bickering, it's going to make it to where your home would not be a place of refuge for your husband. And what's bad about that is it's going to make it to where he's not going to want to come home. God does have an order. Being that your husband is the pastor, you have to allow him to lead and trust his judgment. And if you think that he's not leading in the right way, pray for him. But most importantly, work on yourself. Make sure that you have the right attitude. Pray and ask God to give you patience. One thing I do want you to remember is that your husband is the pastor of the church. So you're going to have to trust his judgment. And if you feel that the church is dead, pray for the church. Pray that God would change things and trust God and know that he is in control. If you feel that, that God has given you a gift of deliverance, when it's God's timing, you will be able to use your gift. Don't be in a hurry. Just wait. When it's meant for you to do something, you don't have to try to knock the door open to do that particular thing. God will open the door for you. Your gift will make room for you. You don't want to be pushy with your husband. In Proverbs, it talks about the nagging wife. And one thing I learned personally is that if I want my husband to do something, not to nag him, but instead show him love and kindness. Love and kindness and respect towards your husband will soften his heart. In the meantime, ask God to give you wisdom and how to walk in your calling. Don't fight against your husband because that is not God's will and that's out of order. Submit to your husband. And if you have a hard time submitting to your husband, pray and ask God to help you. That's something that I do every so often is to pray and ask God to help me to submit to my husband because it's naturally in women to where we don't want to submit. And the enemy don't want us to submit to our husbands because he know that 
It will bring deliverance in your marriage. It will draw you closer to God. So that is why the devil fight us so with submitting to our husband. But I want to encourage you to pray. Ask God to change your heart, to soften your heart, to give you patience, love, and respect for your husband. I also want to encourage you to encourage your husband. Don't criticize him. Focus more on yourself. Once you do that, things will turn around in your favor. My husband has been a pastor for almost 33 years now. And one thing that he has said over and over to the congregation, how that he don't desire for me to be a preacher. But about a month ago, we were celebrating our church's anniversary. And when my husband came around to give remarks, he started talking about how much he appreciated his wife and how that I have stood by his side and that I am one of his main supporters. And he called me around and he announced to the church how that God spoke to him and told him that he should make me his co-pastor. Now, you guys, that's something that I haven't talked to my husband about. I wasn't begging him for that position, but evidently it was God's will. And the reason why I know it was God's will because my husband would have never have gave me that title if God didn't speak to him. So I want to encourage you and to let you know that when it's your time, it will happen. You don't have to nag your husband. God's timing is always perfect. You just have to trust him. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out my playlist for wives in ministry. Thank you for tuning in. If this message resonated with you, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more encouragement and practical tips for living your best life as a pastor's wife. If there is a particular topic that you want me to talk about and you're not comfortable asking me in the comment section, feel free to email me at chatswithflow at gmail.com. May God bless you. Bye.